Now we're going to look at one of the more complex derivative rules. It takes a lot of practice, but it's also one of the most useful, and it's called the chain rule. The chain rule. So I'm, I'm going to show you why it's called the chain rule using Leibniz notation, and then we'll practice it in terms of Leibniz notation so you can see how it works. Then we'll go on to see how it's typically done in practice with all the extra notation. So consider, consider the function, consider f of x equals e to the, not e to the x power, uh, because we know the derivative of that, but what if we have e raised to a power that's not x, like x squared minus 4x. So we've got e raised to the power of x squared minus 4x, okay? The parentheses are not necessary there, but I'm writing on a whiteboard without lines, so I want to make sure you understand that's the exponent. Well, the chain rule says, the chain rule says, that if you want the derivative of y with respect to x, then it might be useful whenever you have a composition of functions, which that's what this is. This is the e to the x function composed with the x squared minus 4x function. We've got x squared minus 4x put in place of x. It's composition. So when you have a composition of functions and you want to take the derivative of the function y with respect to x, it might be useful to first take the derivative of y with respect to something called u, some intermediate function, okay? We'll see how to apply that over here. But of course, dy dx does not equal dy du, so we create a chain of fractions. So if I want to multiply it by something here to give me dy dx, or it could be du dx. And you can see, algebraically, if you did multiply these, the du's would cancel, and the ultimate result would be dy dx. So this is a chain, and each of these could be thought of as a link to the chain. The chain could be as long as you want. You may have numerous links. In practice, you don't see that terribly often, but we will see that as well here in this video to make sure we get the idea of the chain. Now, the key to this process is, what is this u? All right, so we'll illustrate what's going on over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to let u equal x squared minus 4x. Let u equal x squared minus 4x. And you could think of this as the inside function. The outside function is e to the power, and the inside function is x squared minus 4x, it's the input to the outside function. Okay, so there's, there's the u that we could create, some intermediate function, right, the inner function, if you will. Also, what we could do is let y, we could call this f of x, we could call it y. So y is x squared, or sorry, e to the x squared minus 4x. But now that we have this exponent called u, we could also think of y as being e to the u, all right? Which is much simpler than e to this monstrous function. Now, what is the use of this? Well, what it allows us to do is if I have u as a function of x, then I could calculate the derivative of that function u with respect to the variable x very easily because this is just a polynomial. So du dx would be 2x minus 4. Furthermore, now that I have y as a function of u instead of a function of x, I could easily determine the derivative of y with respect to the new variable u. And I can do that because e to the u, if I differentiate that with respect to u, is simply e to the u. All right? So now let's put all of this together. Let's look at the chain rule. So if I were to, let me use a different color here. If I were to come back now 
and look at the derivative of f of x. f prime of x. Well, I've renamed f of x to be y for simplicity because that's going to help us relate back to the chain rule. So f prime of x is the same thing as the derivative of y because y and f of x are the same thing. So f prime of x is the same thing as dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x. And by the chain rule, what I can do then is I can take dy du times du dx. Okay? And we've already denoted what each of those is. So dy du is e to the u power times the derivative of that intermediate or inner function with respect to x, which is 2x minus 4. So we have e to the u times 2x minus 4. Now, we've got to be careful because the original problem was in terms of x only. We created u to help us get to the end of this problem. We created it. So when we write our final answer, we can't have u involved in our final answer. So what we have to do now is make sure that we answer in terms of x. So all we do now is we go back and we replace u with its definition x squared minus 4x. So in other words, this ends up being e to the power of x squared minus 4x times, so this is not part of the power, times the binomial 2x minus 4. Okay. So this is an example showing you how to use the chain by creating an, another variable to replace the inner function. But it's also simple, simpler than that in practice. So let's look at it again. Let's avoid creating the chain, and let's work this problem again. So all the, all the chain rule is telling us is take the derivative this is the derivative of the outer function, okay? And then multiply it by the derivative of the inner function. So let's see if we can apply that here. And let's, let's come back. Here's our, here's our f of x, so we're, we're working on the derivative of this. So the outer function here is e to the power. When you differentiate e to something, when you differentiate e to something, you get e to that thing. So that's e to the x squared minus 4x. That's the derivative of the outer. So the, we'll call that the outer derivative. But this function is not e to the x, it's e to the, a function. So we have to also multiply this by the derivative of the inner function, which is x squared minus 4x. So we might write it as, well, we still have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function, x squared minus 4x. So we've got our inner derivative. And if we simplify this now, we get the outer function, e to the x squared minus 4x, times the derivative of this is 2x minus 4. And we get the same answers we did over there without using Leibniz notation or even creating an inner variable for our inner function. And so in practice, this is what we will typically do. In fact, lots of times we will even skip this step. We'll even skip this step. And we'll just do the, the outer derivative, so e to the power of whatever it was before, multiplied by the derivative of the inner function. Well, the derivative of x squared minus 4x is just 2x minus 4, and so we could immediately write the derivative. Okay, so that's a basic example showing you how to create a chain using an intermediate variable, and then how to do it without creating the chain. All right, so let's try, let's try several more of these. Sometimes the inner function has an inner function as well. Uh, we won't jump right to that, but it could certainly happen. And the idea is you keep multiplying by the derivatives of what are inside. This rule can be blended with 
any of the other rules, such as the product rule, the quotient rule, the power rule, etc. So let's say, let's say we want to determine determine d dx of sine squared of x. Okay. So this is kind. Of, this is a good one to review the notation for the trig functions first of all. And so what you need to realize here is if you want to differentiate sine squared of x, that's the same thing as the derivative of the sine of x function squared. Right? So this sine squared of x is an abbreviated notation for squaring the sine of x function. Now that's useful because the outer function, the outer function is the squaring function, which we know how to differentiate using the power rule. So we have something squared. So if we differentiate that, we're going to bring the exponent down to the front, multiply by this thing, whatever it happens to be, sine of x, lower this power by 1. So that's, that's the derivative of the outer. That's the derivative of the square part. So that's the outer derivative. But that would be great if the, deriv if the function inside was just x, but it's not. It is a uh, sine of x. So we still have to multiply by the derivative of, and let's write it out this time. Let's be careful here. We still have to multiply by the derivative of what's, what's inside that square, which is just the sine of x function. So again, when you look at this, think something squared. How do I differentiate something squared? Well, you use the power rule, and that's what we have here. But then you've got to finish by multiplying by the derivative of what's being squared, in this case, the sine of x. So we still have to do the inner derivative. Okay, the inner derivative. So we end up with 2 sine x, that's all that is. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. So we just end up with 2 sine x cosine x all multiplied together. And that's the derivative of sine squared of x. Okay, So it's, it's good to remember that sine squared is the same thing as sine of x quantity squared. And then because it's a, a function within a function, you have to use the chain rule, do the derivative of the outer, which is the power rule, multiplied by the derivative of the inner, which is just a straightforward differentiation of the sine function. Okay, So that's a great example. Let's do another. So let's determine let's determine the derivative of how about cosine of 1 over the square root of x? Okay, I want to differentiate that. So here, the outer function is the cosine function. So I need to differentiate cosine of something. The derivative of cosine of something is negative sine of that same thing. So that's my outer derivative, but I still have to multiply by the derivative of what is input to the cosine function. So I still have to multiply by the derivative of 1 over the square root of x. Now, to make that derivative a little bit easier, I'll rewrite it as x to the negative 1 half power. Okay? 1 divided by the square root of x is the same thing as x to the negative 1 half power. So I've got negative sine of 1 over the square root of x times the derivative of this, which is just a simple application of the power rule. So that's times negative 1 half, bring your exponent down to the front, x to the, if I subtract 1 from negative 1 half, I get negative 3 halves. Okay. And so if I multiply all of this together, I get a negative times a negative one-half, which gives me positive one-half. 
Let's go ahead and put the x in the front of the sign. So 1 half x to the negative 3 halves power times the sine of 1 over the square root of x. And of course, I could, instead of saying 1 over the square root of x in my answer, I could write x to the negative 1 half also. And then you'd have a bit of consistency with how you're writing your powers of x. But in any case, this is a sufficient way to write the derivative of that function. So I hope you're getting the hang of identifying the outer and the inner. But let's try some more. What if we want to, let's change the wording a little bit. What if we want to differentiate f of x equals, how about 2x plus 1 over x squared minus 3 raised to the fourth power? We're going to differentiate that. So in this case, the outer is something to the fourth power. So f prime of x, we'll use this notation now, f prime of x would be, well, it's just a power rule. Something to the fourth power is going to be four times that thing to the third power. So four times the fraction to the third power. But we're not done because within the fourth power function, there is another function. So we still have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So I've got to do the derivative of the fraction. Okay. And so now this, this guy here is just going to go along for the ride. And if I want to differentiate this quotient, then I have to use the quotient rule. Okay. So I've got the derivative of the outer here. And then the derivative here is going to be a fraction where I've got the bottom, again I'm using the quotient rule, the bottom times the derivative of the top. The derivative of the top is just 2. Minus the top, 2x plus 1, times the derivative of the bottom, which is just 2x. And that's all over the bottom squared. So x squared minus 3 squared. Okay? So we could, we could be lazy here and leave it like that, but this is a mess. Let's clean it up a bit anyway. So we end up with 4 times this fraction cubed. I'll go back and write that in if I feel that this is going to be our last step. Times, well here I get 2x squared minus 6 minus 4x squared plus 2x. Okay. And I'm just noticing something here. Let's go ahead and write this fraction in because I think it might be useful at this point. What we have here, let me make sure you can see all of that on the screen before I go lower than I am already. Okay, that looks good. What we have here is, well, if I cube this fraction, I get 2x plus 1 cubed and I get x squared minus 3 cubed. So what we can do is we can sort of put all of this together now into a single fraction. 4 is the same thing as 4 over 1. So if I multiply 4 over 1, the 4 is going to end up on top. And then I'm going to have 2x plus 1 cubed. And then the numerator of this, well, if I combine like terms, right, distribute my negative, I'll have 2x squared minus 4x squared, so that's negative 2x squared. And then my x term, I've got my x squared term, so my x term would be negative 2x. And then my constant term would be negative 6. So I've got 4 times this numerator times this numerator on top. And on the bottom, I've got x squared minus 3 to the third power 
times x squared minus 3 to the second power. So ultimately, I get x squared minus 3 to the fifth power. And that, that perhaps is about as clean as that can get. Still looks a mess, but it's certainly not as bad as what we had before. So in this case, this was an application of the chain rule with the quotient rule embedded inside, and you can have all sorts of combinations of the rules mixed together. Let's see if we can look at a function that has an outer function, an inner function, and another inner function. Let's see if we can come up with something like that. You keep differentiating until you're out of inner functions. So we'll use different language once again. Let's say we want to determine determine dy dx if y equals, and let's see if we can come up with something. Um, how about tangent tangent of e to the 2x plus 1, okay? I'll, I'll keep the functions fairly simple so we don't get bogged down in that, but so we can see how to differentiate when we have numerous inner functions. All right, so here we go. So dy dx, I'm going to differentiate the outer function. Well, that's the tangent function, so tangent of this. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. So this is going to turn into secant squared of the same argument, e to the 2x plus 1. Okay, so that's the derivative of the outer function. But then I have to multiply that by the derivative of the inner function, e to the 2x plus 1. Okay, so we've got to look at this guy now. So I'll carry my secant squared along for the ride. If I want to differentiate this guy, this inner function, well, it's e to a power, but the power is not x, it's another function. So I use the chain rule again. So in this case, this inner function is an outer function now, and it's e to a power. So when you differentiate e to a power, you just get e to that power. And we have to multiply that because we've got an inner function in there. We still have to multiply by the derivative of that inner function 2x plus 1. You see, so we had an outer function with an inner function, but the inner function was another outer function containing another inner function. Okay, so you just have to be careful. You keep digging in through the layers and differentiating as you go. So now we've got the derivative of 2x plus 1 luckily is just 2, right? That's just 2. So rather than write a whole entire step for that, I'll just do this. And so in the end, I'm just going to move my 2 to the front of all of this as a coefficient. And so my e to the 2x plus 1 doesn't appear to be another argument of the secant squared function. I'll put the e to the 2x plus 1 in the front. You don't have to, but I like the way that looks better. So it's 2 times e to the 2x plus 1, and I still have to multiply that by secant squared of 2x, sorry, of e to the 2x plus 1. And that's as, that's as far as we need to go here. So it's very much a matter of being neat and organized, keeping track of what you still need to differentiate, what doesn't need to be differentiated, right? But ultimately it's just the derivative of the outer times the derivative of the inner. And then when you get the derivative of your inner, if it still needs the chain rule, then do it again, all right?